Good morning. This is Dr. Bill Wyatt again with the American Orthodontic Society. And I'm going to talk with you today about a real bad class 2 division 2 division 1 uh, case. It's an adult that the chin just didn't develop very good at all. And we're going to do what we've done several well, many, many times in cases that had temporal mandibular joint problems, we advance their mandible, you know, to get the head of the condyle away from the retrodiscal tissue. And I did an awful lot of these, and they seemed to work and stay, and we had a lot of success with that. So I thought, well, why don't we just advance that mandible on somebody who has no TMJ problem. We've not had any problem advancing the man, but we're giving any trouble in any way that we could ever tell. So we have done that on several cases, and the only way it works is that if it looks so good that the patient wants to keep it, and they'll have to keep bringing their jaw forward into that position and chewing and we'll show you how you've got to get the teeth occluding real good in this forward position. So let's go ahead and look at this lady uh, and uh, show you what we did with her. I don't remember anything at all about having any temporal mandibular joint problem with her. So I don't think we actually did. First, I'm just going to show you the models of the lady and they've got name tag they stuck a big name tag on there bigger than i liked but anyway this is five of oh seven uh that's when we actually got the case in and you can see the crowding and everything that they have down here in the lower anterior teeth uh and you you can't see the overjet like the upper teeth would be out here somewhere and the lower teeth would be up in the in this area if she pulled it back. Now she usually kept her jaw a little bit to the front of that. And uh, let's get on. I've got several pictures of her models. You can see the uh, the curvous fade down and these teeth stick right up into the roof of the mouth on this lady. And they're very crowded and it, it looks, it's got a lot, a lot wrong with her here. So there you go. The upper teeth are way on out here, but the lower teeth kind of fit back in this area here. But she could keep them up in somewhere around in that area where she kind of kept her jaw uh, forward, but it went actually back that far. Now, here we have uh, seven uh, on the side. You can't see this, but the anterior teeth out here lower anterior teeth, but this area, this almost, uh, well, you say a half inch over his head uh, on this particular girl, young lady. All right, now here is just another view of it. I just wanted to really show you how far we uh, move the mandible in this case. This is not uh, focused good back in the back, but it's just, 07 and we just shot it with the camera in front and it didn't get the focus right back here but you can see the lower anterior teeth are biting right up against the roof of the mouth on this particular case here so it's a it's a, b a bad case uh, but we have done several of these where we advanced the mandible and they look so much better that the people wanted just to really stay with it. And they have to stay there. If they go back and forth, it won't, uh, won't take. But if they stay there for several years, I've had people, you couldn't, you couldn't ban, uh, you know, manipulate their mandible back after it had stabilized in that forward position. So the condyle, the fossil, remodel and reshape. But if you go back and forward with it like that, it won't ever do it. But you have to keep it out there. So we build a lot of 
uh, put ramps on retainers that they wear at night. It keeps their jaw in that forward position right there. And this is just another data birth. She's, uh, I think this is eight, uh, she's 54 years old, is the uh, best I uh, remember here. And you, she looks it. Now, when you come in here and look at the chin, now uh, look at the chin is coming right along here. And then the upper lip is out, out in this area. And we've got a difference between the lip and the chin, something like that. So we're going to advance her mandible out to where it's fitting in like a class one uh, relation case would be. <coughs> All right. Here's another view. I think she's got her jaw forward in that uh, view there. And this is smiling, but she's got it back there because the upper front teeth are out over her lower lip. And this is another view of her teeth there. Now she could bring her teeth up to this point right here, but the lower anteriors were poking, like this tooth right here was poking into the roof of the mouth up there. Now let's get on and I'll show you the, what we put on her here in a minute. And this is more or less what we got after we got through through the case. And that's the lower arch is crowded and it has a tremendous curve in there. You know, these are up in the roof of the mouth and these are down where they occlude. And still 07. Here's two or three things you need to know if you're going to try this. You've got to make this person look so much better that they really want to keep it there. And uh, you've got to have somebody really dedicated to holding their jaw there. If they go to this way, you know, it won't ever uh, remodel to that. But where they just stayed with it, it got to where we couldn't even move the jaw back in that, that area where it was. I did two ladies like this several years ago and brought them to a table clinic in the Fort Worth District Dental Society and mirrors and everything so everybody that was there could go look in these people's mouths and they had been class two, division one and we advanced their mandibles out like this and then they could manipulate them and see everything and tell them how they got out there and all this and I had an old surgeon came up and said well what are we going to do you know well there's a lot of other things uh, that you can do but then a lot of these cases do not care enough about the way they look to go through this constant deal for several years and then during that time the whole condyle and fossa mechanism uh, alters the shape and everything else. Let me get over here. I don't have any x-rays on those now. All right, here we're bringing these teeth forward. I want to expand this lower anterior teeth. So we put a lip bumper down here. When you're pushing and going to expand anything in, in the anterior part of the mouth, the tissue's fairly thin here and you want to get a vascular bed out in front of the teeth themselves. So this lip bumper ought to be out in front of those teeth, just a couple of millimeters, something like that. So there's actually no pressure from the lip from somebody who pulls their lip back when they swallow like that. You've got no interference there so that these blood vessels can form and develop and get out in front of those teeth so that you move the lower teeth forward. We're going to move all these teeth. We're going to bring them down and out at the same time and put all those teeth in there. And it'll work if you just uh, try that. Now you have to put a lip bumper in. Here we use a big old lip bumper. You have to put a special deal. I like to just 
make a bell up about an old one eight arch wire and put it in that little auxiliary tube we already have on the uh, on the uh, the band there. All right, let's get on with it. Now you see uh, the curve of sphere there. This goes up like that, and that tooth goes way well up and about. Now we're going to take this down, and we're going to pick this up a little bit in here and level this whole thing out. And you'll be surprised how it looks just leveling it out. It looks so much better uh, for somebody like that. Now here, during the case, we used a bite plate up here in the anterior part of the mouth to open that up. And that's where the lower anteriors would bite up in this area right here. And this is the upper arch when we started. You can see the difference of it when we get through. Now the lower arch, of course, is lined up like this and across here. And we're going to expand this and just bring this whole thing out, something like, like that. Now, you can do this. It's, and this is another type of case you want somebody who's just getting into orthodontics. They, they wouldn't know what to do with a case like this. But uh, what we're teaching and, and going to is people who do everything, you know, adult orthodontics, and that's really adult orthodontics where you are developing or you're getting that person to develop the chin forward. You don't make the chin bigger when we bring it forward and the condyle kind of goes back like this uh, in a situation like that and the fossil will move forward some and after a few years it'll be functioning like that. Now, uh, there's some good friends that are old surgeons and uh, one of them said, well, it, you can pull them out there but they won't stay. Well, they won't stay unless they, they're so much better looking out there than they are back where they were, and they really want to be out there. You've got to stay there day and night for several years, and then it will remodel the case where you do your chewing out here in the front. And this happens all the time when uh, people are wearing these uh, herbs appliances for old young kids. Uh, they don't work good until you get your personal, your permanent teeth in with a lot of deep cusps which hold the jaw in the forward position till it remodels back here in the back. And it happens with the herpes appliance on children too. So there, now you see we've got room out here in front where we're going to advance the mandible as we go down with a they're going to go down and forward like that. Okay, this is 07. Now there's the lower interior. You see how there we've got them leveled out. Now we've got all of them in place, but we're still going to bring this down and we're going to pick this up a little more in here and watch what this looks like after you get through. Now we've got this lip bumper. It's running interference for these lower anterior teeth. It pushes back here and if you want to wear some elastics or something and pull these back uh, in a problem like this. All right, here we, that's the uh, focus wasn't good there. On this now is the upper arch, but we're going to enlarge this upper arch to where it fits the lower arch a lot better. Now the lower looking about like that and you see these teeth are coming out and getting close to that but they're lined up and we've lowered them we've depressed the teeth we use the intruding arches for that now uh, here it is this is the uh, date i forget just exactly what it was but now this is when we finished her case up and we had it where the teeth fit together and you see the shape of the upper teeth and you can see here it is like a mirror in the mouth so you can look at them going up this direction right there you see now if you look at this close 
you'll see a little ramp in there, right in that part. You can pick it up down here some, but when she bites into there, her lower teeth have to fit into this uh, little groove right there, and that keeps the mandible in that forward position. Now at night, it's best if they tend to go back to put a large ramp in there that they cannot get behind, and they have to wear that at night to keep that jaw in that position because you've got to stay there for quite a while before the fossil we remodel and the, then the condyles tend to lit, tilt back on the deal and that brings them back in position. Now, if you don't think this works, <laughs> that's all right with me. Uh, I don't mind, but it does work, but you've got to have somebody who it just looks so much better that they will wear all of this stuff and keep it keep in place this way until the, the condyles and the fossil bag and you have to re, remodel or everything. But look at the difference in the teeth where they are. Now you have to make them fit where she chews out here and then the fossil the condyle will actually, uh, the fossil kind of lean out and the condyle lean back. And finally the fossil just pull up over position and the condyle will fit in there. And after several years of staying in that position, some of these cases, and I've had one, you could not get their jaw back in that position that they came in the office with. So anyway, we've got some good x-ray uh, equipment these days and you come back but that's the way her jaw looked and it fit on the side like that on both sides in a class one relation now this is orthodontics that really needs to be looked into seriously. The schools ought to take cases like this and see exactly what it takes to get this remodeling back here and to keep that there. You got to hold them there. And you can't just make a person do that. But if you get them looking so much better when their jaw's out front like this and they really want to do it, then you can get it and have success at it. Uh, even if you don't get full success and they just move the jaw back and forth, you can make them look a heck of a lot better and they can look better if they want to. They sign up in the front, but then they maybe they chew back here further, you know, but you want to where they chew in the position that you've got the teeth in. So this is something uh, orthodontics is not for beginners in here. And you can see where the upper jaws have formed. That, I mean, that's the way we develop that upper jaw. And if you think the bone doesn't move with the teeth, uh, I've been talking that for years, and still people do not believe that you can move these teeth out here and when the teeth were back over here, the one bone here, and they'd say, well, you got to section this off. And it's just a bunch of bull. You do not. And if you bring all these teeth out at one time, this alveolar bone goes, but you've got to put this buckle root torque to make the roots go with the crowns, and you can widen out anybody's jaw you want to and bring it out like that and make it large. And now you've got to hold it out there unless you, if you ran off and left the tongue, which was too small now, to, uh, it didn't have enough pressure to push out here to hold it, you'd have a problem retaining it. But the tongue kind of is uh, generous in this fashion because it will uh, just kind of fit into what uh, space we've got there for it except a lot of times the tongue forms a class three and shoves the lower jaw out this way and then 
you operate on Roy Jordan, pull it back, and it'll relapse every darn time. Uh, you know, the tongue has got force on that. So if you're sticking out here and your tongue is a culprit, then you've got to bring the maxilla forward at least part of the way. And that's what we did on some of these cases where we'd take out uh, teeth on the bottom and we'd pull with class three elastics, bring the upper back some, but bring the lower posterior forward quite a bit. And we brought the, uh, get it to where the tongue would fit in there. And we've shown you how to use class three retention and you can pull it the rest of the way while it uh, model, remodels to that new position. Uh, this is orthodontics is way out, uh, but if you if you're in a school, I don't see why the schools don't do research on stuff like this uh, rather than doing simple, easy orthodontics. Uh, we really need research into stuff like this. It really needs that. So anyway, this is the lower. You see how we've got it in a fixed lower retainer right here. And the upper comes down. And it's a totally different jaw and a totally different looking woman, I tell you. And if you make it where they look so much better when you the way you've got it, they will tend to bring that jaw out there and keep it. But if they don't really aren't sold on it to start with, you won't make it there. So this is where the lower anterior was. And there's the way we ended up with it. And there's the upper. And there is the way the over jet, you see these teeth went back here. And the upper teeth out there. It's amazing what you can do with these teeth. And there's the over jet and over bite. And the, these teeth went in the way up here and down over on the other side. I think we, and you can see where these teeth, that one tooth is right up in the roof of the mouth, like that. And that's 07. And this date of birth, I think that's what this is. She's 54 years old. And that's the way the jaw looked. And then we got it out more like that. So I'm going to hang up and I appreciate your watching. And I don't want to get this orthodontic stuff so complicated that you feel like you can't even start to do it. Just get in there and get with it and you learn how to do it. We can, we've got videos on almost everything I can think of in there and I'm sure there's a lot of things that I haven't and uh, things I wasn't uh, capable of doing back then when we didn't have the x-rays that we have today and we just I got in this at the end of the TAD uh, when the TADs were just starting so I didn't have a great deal of experience to show you with them but they're excellent to use and this is, to me, a challenging thing, and I hope many of you take it up. And this is, she's smiling here, but the lip looks like it's pulled back underneath there. And so here we have people that, there's just a lot of adult people out there that want to do something with their teeth. And there's just, the majority of the orthodontists, I'm not kicking uh, the, the ones that have been taught, they just do not do not teach them this in the school. Maybe they feel it's too difficult for them to learn something like this. But let's get our schools organized to where they can do complicated adult orthodontics as well as preventive and interceptive 
pediatric orthodontics and uh, this stuff in between is easier that I, I, I never I enjoyed them as much I do uh, something where we had to come in like we did on this particular case. So thank you for watching and uh, join our uh, group. I have a, a you know, a thing that we, we would love to have you. We've got uh, nearly 5,000 subscriptions and that's a, 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 a thrill to me to know that there's that many people looking at this uh, material and it goes uh, everywhere. And give me a, uh, drop me a line over here and if uh, I have models on much of this stuff, models and records and everything else, if there were enough people I thought wanted to look at those things, I would try to have a little building, something where you could come and do that. So if you're somebody that would like to look at uh, some of this uh, later on, uh, let us know and we might get arranged to have these things uh, out where people can look actually at the models and the x-rays and the pictures and everything. So uh, thank you for watching and I'll Hope to see you and have a Merry Christmas and uh, I will holler at you later. So, bye-bye.